Well, good morning, friends. <laughs> Welcome to uh, podcast on Sunday morning. It's nine o'clock. Hope you're able, if you're here locally, to catch my radio show. It's on at eight o'clock on 1100 AM this morning. Nine o'clock now, Sunday Pacific time, but um, we change. We don't change, but everybody else changes. The time zone's changing again. Congress is uh, up in arms over it. They're going to change that pretty soon. So that's going to change change pretty quick. So, yeah, it's 9 o'clock in the morning in Arizona and in uh, California. This is the last day of that. It will be similar to Mountain Time tomorrow. Hope you'll join into our services. Remember, we have two live services every week. Uh, We have... uh, Thursday nights and Friday nights, we have preaching, teaching, healing, and deliverance at both services. Both of them are, um, excuse me, broadcast on our uh, YouTube teaching channel. You just go to youtube.com slash house of healing AZ. And you're there Thursday and Friday nights at seven o'clock Arizona or mountain time. And also remember, we have uh, two live zoom services every week. Um, the ladies zoom is monday nights at 6 30 with jennifer and julie jj's they take over that it is fantastic ladies please don't miss that one we have a zoom for men and women wednesday night brother rick and uh, stephanie are on that one and that one's just booming you wouldn't believe the amount of people getting a blessing on that one so please uh, remember that will be on uh 6 p.m. Mountain Time or Arizona Time every Wednesday, every Wednesday. And if you need to get a hold of me, uh, Mike at HardcoreChristianity.com. I answer all my emails, even the bad ones. And uh, I know this is going to shock you, but I do get some negative emails occasionally. (laughs) Those things happen. And... um, Speaking of that, speaking of that, I wanted to share something with you very important today from God's Word. Welcome to the Deep Things of God with Brother Mike. Thanks for tuning in every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, Arizona time, Mountain Time. Uh, If you look at the book of Philippians, that was a spectacular book to say the least. Thing was off the chain. And it was written... (laughs) in prison and uh, the devil had had enough of Paul and he wanted him dead in the worst way and Paul was the greatest Christian that ever lived the most anointed man of God that ever lived there never has been and there won't be anybody ever like him until the two witnesses arrive during the tribulation but until then Paul is it He was spectacular, to say the least. And uh, he suffered enormous, enormous persecution. Uh, Stuff I can't even imagine. Uh, 99% of it, I couldn't even make it through it. You know, I'm not uh, not even on the same page as he was. And he was... He told the Corinthians about some of his persecutions, and they were absolutely amazing. How somebody could live under that kind of pressure was quite remarkable. But it gives you an idea of the grace of God. When the Lord told him, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And... Paul testified about himself going to heaven. He saw all kinds of things that most of which he wasn't even allowed to repeat. And uh, obviously somebody who actually goes to heaven, I'm not talking about these people on YouTube that said they've been to heaven, that those are all fake. I'm talking about somebody who's actually gone to heaven. If you've actually been there, that's a, that's a head trip, huge. And that person would have to be humbled in some way And that's what happened to Paul. He was given a thorn in the flesh. Uh, Angelos was the Greek word uh, for messenger of Satan. 
Angelos is the Greek word for angel. A fallen angel was allowed to follow Paul around and cause him all kinds of persecution events. And he lists them in the same chapter. He's telling them about the thorn in the flesh. The thorn in the flesh wasn't a sickness or an illness. It was all the persecutions he faced. <laughs> well, here we are in jail and Paul is winning again. They put him in prison and Paul's going to win again. And the spirit of the Lord then tells him, go ahead and write about two thirds, two thirds of the New Testament. You know? <laughs> Unbelievable. This guy was anointed beyond belief. What an amazing person. But it gets even more amazing as we look at Philippians chapter two. And here's what relates to you and I. Here we go. Here we go. Verse 17. Paul says, this is the King James Bible, yes, and if I be offered, offered, the Greek word for offered there is spendo. Spendo means to take a, a glass of liquid and pour it out. You just pour it on the ground, pour it into a cup, pour it out of a vase, what have you. That's what that means, pet spendo. He says his life was going to be poured out as a sacrifice of your faith. Paul is sacrificing his life. He's becoming a martyr. And it says, I joy and rejoice for you all. He was saying, I joy in me being executed as a martyr, Greek word, Cairo, which means to be cheerful. He was in a cheerful mood knowing he was going to be executed. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in verse 18, he says something even more amazing. And for the same cause also do you become cheerful, Cairo, joy. I want you to be cheerful and rejoice with me that I, I am being executed. Can you imagine that? He's telling you. He's telling you, I'm about to have my head cut off and I couldn't be happier. What's happening here? Well, remember that Paul, unlike these kooks on YouTube, Paul had actually been to heaven and seen it. And he was trying to explain to the Philippians who were going to be very sad that he was executed. He said, listen, don't, don't be sad over it. I'm, I'm happy. I'm cheerful over it because I know where I'm going. See, and the reason that Christians mourn other Christians who die and the reason Christians themselves fear death is because <clears throat> We have to grasp the glories of heaven by faith. We have not seen it. I've never seen anything in heaven. I don't know anything about it. But I receive it by faith that it is the most beautiful place in the universe. That's, I mean, that's the way I look at it. And I know that heaven is a, a land of glory, but I have never seen it. And so Christians tend to be hesitant about dying. And if somebody else dies as a Christian, they go into mourning. And Paul was explaining to them, listen, don't do that. Don't go into mourning when I am executed. <clears throat> now, this is coming from somebody who's faced enormous persecution, enormous suffering for the Lord. And then if you'll flip over to chapter four, he drops a bomb on us. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. You can remember it very easily. Philippians 4, 4. Philippians 4, 4. Easy to do. Here he says something amazing while in follow-up to what he had previously told him in chapter 2 about him dying and being cheerful and about him dying and him asking them to be happy for him that he's dead. He got his, he's going to have his head cut off. He's going to be executed. And he wants them to be happy about it. Why? He wanted to teach him this in chapter four. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, 
rejoice. Now, this is the challenge for everybody who's a born again Christian. I'm no different. I face this challenge constantly myself. This is the challenge of our lives to be able to be cheerful and rejoice over same Greek word Cairo rejoice in the Lord. Always now that Greek word there pantote means under all circumstances. So it says here be cheerful in the Lord verse four under all circumstances again I say rejoice Cairo be cheerful. Then he says let your moderation be known to all men for the Lord is at hand. Anytime somebody gets out to an extreme or something. Predictory doctrine 99% of the time the doctrine is going to be false and you're going to get into trouble. If you go extreme on anything in the natural world or the spiritual world things go usually go bad. Then he says in verse 6 a mic drop. Be careful for nothing. Now remember this background. Here's a guy who has had enormous mind numbing persecution, everything, whippings, beatings, all of it, and more, shipwreck, the whole thing. He says, be careful for nothing. Greek word for careful there is merimnao. It means don't be anxious about anything. Don't live with anxiety. For anything, he says. That's what it says in the Greek text. But in everything, in everything, good or bad, by number one, prayer, number two, supplication. What's the difference between those two? Well, prayer is could be like one prayer, but a supplication is a list of, of prayers. Deusis is the Greek word. It means to make your requests plural be made known unto God. Request, 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 request. Deuses. Supplication. I'm supplement, supplicating to God. One, two, three, four, five. And then he says, but don't do that unless you add something to it. Okay, you you got to have the ingredients right for food to turn out, and you got to have the ingredients right for miracles. To turn out. He says, he says, by prayers and supplication with thanksgiving. Eucharistia. Have you ever heard of the Eucharist in uh, Roman Catholicism? Well, that's where they're that's where they got this from, from this Greek word, Eucharistia. It means to develop an attitude of gratefulness, gratitude. You have to add thankfulness, gratefulness to your prayer and to your supplication, your list of prayers. He's saying you have to combine them to get them answered. Let your request be made known unto God. And then verse 7 says, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 7 passes all understanding okay greek word for understanding there is noose it was mistranslated noose is your mind what paul's saying here is that if you do these things if you pray and you supplicate and you add thanksgiving to it gratefulness and gratitude if you add it your mind is not going to be able to grasp the miraculous answers to your prayer. And you will be at peace that you don't even understand. And the peace of God, which passes all mental abilities to grasp, noose your mind. The peace of God will be on, will be beyond what your mind is able to comprehend. It is should have been translated mind blown, but they didn't have that back in the 1600s, did they? And it says the peace of God, 
while you're praying, now remember, this is a person who has suffered enormous persecution. He had peace during his persecution period, and he has cheerfulness that he's about to be executed, and he's trying to pass these skills on to us and the Philippian church. So what he's trying to do. I'm sharing it with you because I wanted you to know why your prayers have not been answered and why so many prayers on your list have not been answered. You've been supplicating and you've been praying and that's good, you're supposed to do that. But your prayers have not been answered because you forgot to add an ingredient to the mix. You gotta add the yeast to the bread. You gotta add the ingredient, thanksgiving. And he said, in everything, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything. Now, here's the killer. That means bad stuff, along with good stuff. The Greek word pas is the word used for everything here, and it means under all circumstances, in everything. So that means that you have certain struggles and failures and losses. The combination should be mixed in with gratefulness. For example, dear Lord Jesus, thank you that this screwed up and that screwed up. Everything's gone bad. Nothing's working. The money's gone. The people don't like me. My family rejected me. Everybody thinks I'm a loser. Thank you, Jesus. It sounds crazy, doesn't it? This is information coming from the great apostle Paul, who's an expert in this field. And this is how he got through all those horrible persecutions. This is why and how he saw his execution as such a blessing. He loved it. He'd already seen heaven. He knew where he was going and couldn't wait to get there. In fact, in one point in the, the text, he told his, the people, hey, I'd rather go there now, but for your sakes, for your sakes, I'm, I'm, I've asked the Lord to let me stay here so I can continue to help other people. But now that he was in prison, writing the letter to the Philippian church, things had changed. He knew he was about to be executed. He was going to be offered up as a sacrifice, a sacrifice for the garter gospel. And nowadays, Christians don't have this mindset that somebody dies or they, they're dying. Oh, they're, everybody's sad about it. But back in the day, the first century Christians, these people were so loaded with the Holy Ghost and they were so dedicated to God that it was a privilege to be martyred. They saw it as a privilege and they weren't praying for it, but if it was imminent, they looked forward to it. They did not consider their lives, Hebrews 11, they didn't see their lives coveted unto death. They were willing to be martyred and become a Christian. Now that concept's crazy in America because obviously we got so many carnal Christians here, nobody can grasp that situation. But in Philippians 4, you need to make this adjustment and you need to make it starting today because God wants you to have your prayers answered. God wants to answer prayers. He likes helping people. He enjoys it. It's part of his personality. He likes it and he feels good about it. Father likes helping people. It's part of his nature. That's who he is. He's a genetic helper. God is love. That's what it says. John said. John taught us that. It doesn't say God loves. It says God is love. That's what he is. That's what he does. That's that's all he can do. He can't do anything else but love. He doesn't know how. He doesn't have the ability to do it. He doesn't have the capacity to do it. Because that's what he is. You can't change what you are. I can't become an ape. I'm a human. God cannot become anything other than what he is. God is love and because of that he wants to help you and he wants to answer your prayers but 
If you don't learn spiritual warfare and you don't study the word of God and you don't know what you're doing, your prayers are not going to be answered, period. Prayers don't get answered in a vacuum. You have to follow the procedure. You have to obey. You have to do what you're told. You have to do what's right. There's no way out of it. And Paul is telling you, prayer is good, but not good enough. Supplication is good. A list of prayers is good. Not good enough. It's not good enough. It's not working. He said, I added thankfulness to my prayers. It worked. And I am cheerful that I'm being executed. Because that's an answer to one of my prayers. I want to go home. I'm ready to go home. I fought the good fight. I kept the faith. I went through untold persecution. You see, uh, as you can imagine, it's easy to see. Uh, Paul was considered an icon back then. In the first century church, Paul was like off the hook great. And he felt very uncomfortable with that. He didn't like people thinking he was wonderful and great and glorious and this and that. But, there, but it was inevitable. There's no way to get around it. Okay. <clears throat> An incident happened to Smith Wigglesworth, you remember that in his book, where he started crying one day, and the, and the, and the pastor asked him why he was crying. He said, well, poor Wigglesworth, he said, God's going to take me out of the way. He will not share his glory with another. That's what Wigglesworth said. What was happening there? Well, Wigglesworth's anointing was so monstrously high, not as high as Paul, but I mean, uh, they they would have been on speaking terms for sure. That people had kind of made an idol out of out of Wigglesworth. They had kept putting him on a pedestal up there. God, Father doesn't like that. He wants the Lord Jesus on the pedestal, not anybody else. For obvious reasons, it would be only Christ the Healer and nobody else. Bang. Paul didn't like that. Wigglesworth didn't like it. Okay. In our society today, because it's life with carnal Christians, most of them are gutless losers. These YouTube crackpots and these megachurch pastors and these guys and TV preachers, the whole thing is gasping hideous embarrassment. It's an idol worship situation. You have to have a figurehead up there to draw in the money. And that figurehead has to be this wonderful, great leader. And everybody has to kind of put him on a pedestal. You have to do that to generate the donations, the ties, selling the products, everything else. And that sickness, mental sickness among Christians, has led to this prophet apostle movement. You look on YouTube, you see, you see all these ads for services, Miracle Night, blah, 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 with apostle so-and-so and prophets such as such, prophetess this and that oh it's a, it's a, so ridiculous it's unbelievable it's so ridiculous okay wigglesworth never used any of those terms and was obviously all of them but wigglesworth knew something that the kooks on youtube don't know is that Everyone who exalts himself shall be abased sooner or later. But he that humbles himself shall be exalted. And that's what God wants you to do. He wants you to be with a humble heart and a cheerful heart and a thankful heart for both good and bad. Okay? What's the worst things that happen? Oh. People don't support you. They don't like you. They criticize you. Your family doesn't support you. They don't believe like you do. Your spouse doesn't believe like you do. You got a, You married a carnal person. Then you got saved. And then your spouse didn't get saved. And then, then he doesn't support you. She doesn't support you. On and on and on it goes. There are problems par excellence. And in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus our Lord. And if you'll add thanksgiving to your prayer list, you will A, get your prayers answered, and B, 
you will have the peace of God way down deep in your heart that passes all of the comprehension of your mind. This peace during this trial doesn't make sense. I, this is ridiculous. That How can I be so restful and peaceful when my daughter, my son, my spouse, my parents are going through what? Drug addiction, cancer, terminal illnesses, poverty, eviction, everything. How can I be at peace with God? during these tough times well the way you do it is you thank god for the good things that have happened to you and all the bad thank you that this doesn't work thank you that that failed thank you that i made this mistake thank you that i screwed up thank you for those people rejecting me thank you i'm grateful because i know God's grace is sufficient for me, and his strength will be made perfect in my weakness. I get to win even though I'm weak. Can you imagine it? Yeah, this is being told to us by the most anointed man who ever lived and who was facing execution. And he knew it was going to happen this time. He wasn't going to get out. And he told the Philippians to be cheerful with him while he's being murdered. Was the guy crazy? No, he was crazy as far as the world is concerned. Yeah, the guy was completely nuts. But as far as you're concerned, he was on the money. That is exactly what the Holy Spirit is trying to develop in each one of us. Why? Because you can grieve the spirit and you can quench the power of the spirit. You have that ability. That's how powerful you are. How do you do that? You start griping and complaining. As soon as you start complaining about something and griping about it, moaning about it, you lost your prayer. It's over. You lost your prayer. Yeah, okay, uh, on a small note, a practical note. Friday night, I was teaching at the Delivery Center, and I love doing that. It's a privilege to do it. I'm teaching on the two Simons. If you haven't seen that teaching, man, you got to nail it. it. It's really, really helpful. You know, and I, and I get up there at 7 o'clock. That's when the service starts. And I look out at the crowd. There's almost nobody there. There might have been five people there or something like that. I didn't turn a hair. Didn't make a bit of difference. I just went right ahead with it. People straggled in, left the line, filled up later. And then, and then at the altar call, I'd never had this happen before. I've been doing this for years, obviously. Everybody that came up to the altar call after I taught on the woman the two women with the alabaster box. Jesus' first anointing, and then Jesus' second anointing, and then his last anointing was uh, at Martha and Mary's house. Mary did it. And there were three anointings of Jesus before he was murdered. So I took the first two, so at Simon the leper's house and Simon the Pharisee's house, those two. And uh, what happened was, I opened the altar for prayer, and wow, everybody that came up for prayer, I'd never had this happen before, got down on their knees to pray. And as soon as I saw that, I thought, well, man, this is going to be a special night. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I was looking forward to it because I'd never seen that before. Everybody that came up all across the whole sanctuary, everybody was on their knees. Strange. So I kept going. And the Spirit of God started to move through the lineup, like he always does. And the ministry team killed the thing as usual. Demons flying out of people left and right. But at the end, but at the end of the service, I felt this 
kind of quietness come over the room. The sanctuary got like still, strange. And I thought, well, this is praise time. So I had taken two people and brought them up to the front. And uh, the three of us were singing in tongues, praising the Lord. And we were singing in tongues and praising the Lord. And this has never happened before. I just, all of a sudden I looked up and like 15 people just stood up and came to the front and started singing in tongues with us. It was amazing. People were giggling with joy. People were crying. Holy Ghost moved again. And how did that happen? Well, when I first got there, I could have gotten discouraged because there was like five people in the whole sanctuary or something like that. It was very, maybe 10. There was very low people. I didn't even turn a hair on it. I didn't even flinch. I just said, thank you, Jesus, and moved forward. Okay. And when bad things happen to you, you got to be able to move forward. And the only way to do that is to follow Paul's lessons. You have to learn to add thanksgiving to your prayer list. Dear Lord Jesus, my daughter is on meth. The devil's trying to kill her. Thank you. Thank you. Because the sicker she gets, the greater testimony she's going to have when you make your move and she's healed. Uh huh. Dear God, all the money's gone. Thank you. I'm broke. Thank you. Because my testimony, my testimony is going to be so much greater because my pressure from Satan. Was so powerful. When the persecution goes up, your praise and thankfulness goes up. And God will show up like he did Friday night in the worship session at the end of the service. It was it was wonderful, and uh, I'll never forget it. Paul has taught us what to do and how to do it, right? And you're going to do it starting at this very second. From this moment on, you're going to add thanksgiving to the miserable things in your life. Well, Brother Mike, I thought I wasn't supposed to have all this misery. I thought it was supposed to be peace, joy, and happiness. You thought wrong. You were listening to some gutless, useless, greed-ridden TV preacher or some kook on YouTube telling you how wonderful their, their Christian life is and how you're supposed to emulate their wonderful Christian life. It's all a bunch of B. And then you add an S to it. You know what a B added to an S to it is? Yeah, you don't want to know. Yeah, don't listen to these kooks on YouTube. What you need to listen to is what I read you. That is directly from God Almighty, what I just read you. Not, not the whack job on YouTube. Not the Sunday morning uh, TV preacher doing the idol worshiping thing. Forget that stuff. Go with this, okay? What's the number one problems? Oh, they're obvious. Children, spouses, parents, right? Finances. Is there, is there anything bigger than that? Usually not. Dear Lord Jesus, my wife is jacked up. She's nuts. Thank you. My husband's an imbecile. He made it. He keeps failing. Thank you, Jesus. My son. My son's lazy. Stupid. He's ignorant. He won't work. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I got my back is killing me. My neck's killing me. Thank you. Nobody showed up for the service, Brother Mike. There's nobody here. Thank you. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus, our Lord. <laughs> As Paul, Apostle Paul would say to you, I'll just speak for him right now. I'm getting ready to be offered as a sacrifice. I'll be dead uh, very soon. I'm so happy over it. Please be happy with me. 
Thank you. Goodbye.